Happy Wednesday, my friends. Thanks so much for joining us as always. I'm Rachel Phillips and I am one of the health coaches here at Infenta Health. It is my great pleasure to, in, uh, to introduce our guest speaker today. Um, I have Mr. Todd McGuire on the line. He is our co-founder and chief technology officer. He's gonna talk us through men's health. Um, so Todd, I'll take myself off video and let you, you run with it. All right, thank you, Rachel. And can you hear me okay? Excellent. Well, I, I appreciate um, being invited as a, a guest host today during um, Men's Health Month. It's kind of fun. And you know what I'm going to talk about today is definitely has some men's health um, connections and some things that are even broader than that and just universal to anyone trying to be healthy. But um, yeah, I really appreciate getting to uh, join your, your wellness chat this week. So let's... Um, go to the first slide, the second slide, and I'll explain why the title is Heal Thinking. So, you know, the concept of a diet is what I wanted to open up with and try to get past the thought of um, does a diet make sense and really just begin with a kind of a, a very clear statement that no, it's it's not the, the focus, but what's the alternative in the place of that? And it's this, oh, looks like it's advancing, um, Rachel, um, on its own. Can you stop the slides for a moment? Yeah, it's, I think if you e exit the presentation mode, we just need to um, figure out why it's it's going automatically. Yeah, if you go okay. into, <laughs> hey, Rachel, if you go into, um, the, the slideshow tab under PowerPoint, and it says there's a checkbox in the middle that says use timings. It looks like that's probably turned on. Do you see that checkbox? Mm. When you, there's a, some menus up at the top, and it says home, insert, draw, uh, and then there's one called slideshow. It's right after. And then in the middle of that, there's a checkbox that says use timings. There we go. Got it. You uncheck that and try it again. Sorry about that. Real time tech solutions. There we go. Better. Yeah. Yeah. So it. Um, yeah. It looks like it's it's stable now. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. But that's good. You know, it's a good example of of trying to to be healthy. You know, it's it's a real time problem solving battle every day. You know, I, I always kind of joke about it. It's like brushing your teeth. You know, the, the results don't last, so we recommend it daily. I think nutrition and exercise and, and trying to, to be healthy is the same thing. You don't get it off. You never get to check it off your um, to-do list because it's, it's always going to be on there. And I think that's a good um, kind of real-world segue into like why this first slide up here is talking about a diet. And if you advance, um, Rachel, you know, the, the idea is you can't think of it as a diet because that's typically short term. It's a, that's something you're going to try for a while and you can never stay with it if you're in this extreme deprivation mode about just about anything. Over time, it's just going to um, weaken you to the point where you're going to give up and you're going to say, I can't sustain this. this. This worked for a little while, but it's just too much. So the alternative on the next slide is this concept of HEAL. And I love this acronym, healthy eating and active living. And you know what I wanted to talk about today is just some kind of fundamentals in here around healthy eating and active living really as a mindset. You know, this heal mindset is a way to set yourself free from the concept of being on a diet and doing things that are unsustainable and instead learning a way to just be a bit more um, healthy in how you approach each of the meals, each of your opportunities for movement throughout the day and not feel like you're, you're doing something that's cheating yourself or depriving yourself, but you're just getting smarter about how you, uh, how you feed yourself and how you move your body. So if you go to the next, you know, it kind of um, starts with this question that we, we see a lot talking to our members around nutrition or exercise and, you know, which one is, is more important. And if you click on this, um, Rachel, you know, the, the answer is, is kind of um, 
it, it's kind of a trick question. I think if you click one more time, it should come together. Yeah. So it's really, it, it's not an or question. It's an and question. You know, each one, the, the nutrition side and the movement side serve different purposes. They work together and you can make progress doing just one of these two things, but you really can um, double your efforts and just get into a, an automatic habit mode when you combine both of them. And it really can be um, pretty powerful. So let's advance to the next. So starting on the, the healthy eating side of the HEAL acronym, you know, portion distortion alone is probably the, the biggest thing that is lurking out there and um, causes us as grief. And you know, if you look at the example of the Chipotle burrito here, where it's, it's kind of misleading because that burrito um, has great ingredients, organic, um, you know, different veggies and lean chicken breast and it has a lot of good stuff that each by itself is is healthy and is fine, but the quantity of it is just too much. You know, if you go and get a classic chicken burrito and, and you say yes to a lot of the questions they're gonna ask you when you walk down that um, assembly line in Chipotle, you're gonna walk out of there with a 1200 pound or 1200 calorie um, burrito. Sometimes it feels like 1200 pounds. And that's just way more than anyone needs in any one meal, let alone for lunch, which might be a, their, their most common time people um, have it. And if you cut that thing in half and have 600 calories, it's still a lot. It's still plenty of energy, but you'll see in, in the upcoming slides, it's going to avoid the roller coaster problem that eating that entire burrito can do to you. So let's go to the next. And what, what's at play here is this concept of, um, of portion sizes. And if you go through, and there's some examples here on the screen of, of different common things, whether it's, it's a burger or a, a muffin, um, or even like a slice of pizza, um, a fountain drink, the, what was a, a large Coke you know, 20, 30 years ago is now the, the, the regular size. And then it goes up from there. Like everything in this value kind of economy that we've moved into has grown in size, but you don't really notice it. And you're often not presented with the old sizes. And so it's, it's really um, just waiting to ambush you at any decision point on how do you feed yourself. And so there are some ways to, to get around that. And if you go to the next slide, um, that are right in your hand, you know, and so if you you look down at your your hand right now, I'm, I'm staring at my my uh, the palm of my left hand. I mean, that palm is a perfect way to estimate how big should a protein be. And then that fist, close it up. That's a good way to look at how big should my portion of carbohydrates be. And then when you're building this perfect plate, if you look at those two are going to make up about a quarter of it. And then for the other half, um, those are leafy vegetables. And you really don't even have to count the, the calories of those. For the most part, you can have as much of that as you want and you're gonna get full way before you'd ever eat too much. But there are some ways that regardless of what you're gonna be presented with at a restaurant, at a fast food place, at your kitchen table, you've got some, some things you can use in your, um, that are just on your hand and you know, even the thumb that's on there for a way to estimate you know, how much salad dressing should I use? How much of a, of a good fat um, that's, that might be fine in small quantities, but you, you wanna avoid this, um, this over you know, dousing of the salad with a half a cup of, of ranch and it's gonna undo all the good that was, was in that salad. Let's go to the next one. And so, you know, taking this, these simple concepts that instead of the diet, we're thinking of healthy eating and we, we're building this perfect plate and that's gonna get you to, um, depending on your, your hand size, but largely it's gonna get you to a day that's gonna have about 2000 calories, maybe 1800 calories, but it's gonna get you there without having to try to count the calories and everything that you're eating. And it's for a lot of people, we find that that is more sustainable and something they can, they can live with. And then the second piece in here, when you look at that cycle, you know, starting with breakfast at the top and moving through lunch and dinner, but you notice some of these snack ideas, um, those, you know, where you can combine a good protein and a, a quality carbohydrate, like a, a, an apple and a piece of string cheese is a great mid-morning snack. They give you, um, you know, that benefit of um, giving you some fiber, giving you some protein that's slowly absorbed into your, um, into your bloodstream and, and kind of stabilizes your, your energy. And if you go on to the next slide, you can see kind of a visual example of that, where on the left is if you just have a couple of, of big meals throughout the day, and maybe you know a lot of people try to um, manage their weight by um, skipping breakfast, saying, "Oh, I'm not that hungry," but then they get to lunch and they're they're ravenous and they eat that whole Chipotle burrito that I showed you, and so you know their energy had kind of crashed right before lunch. Then they get this big surge of energy, but probably too much, and you kind of 
a lot of the um, you know, a lot of the rice in that burrito ultimately is a starch that's going to turn into um, elevated blood sugar, and you're going to get an insulin response, and you're going to eventually get a crash from it. If you have too too big of a swing, and then you're not going to want to eat anything else. So, well, then by dinner time, you're starving again, and you have this this next big meal. Versus on the right, if you spread that eating out throughout the day and have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but some healthy snacks in between, you never get to that really ravenous state and you can have a bit more of a, of a steady energy, which lets you make better decisions. You know, it lets you have a, a, better, um, a, a better mindset of how to go through the day. And if you advance on this one, Rachel, and you know, there's kind of a, um, a surprise in here. If you go and look at the National Weight Loss Registry, and this is a, a really fascinating database of people that have been able to lose at least 5% of their body weight, keep it off for at least a year. And then they're surveyed on what are some of the habits? What are the, some of the things you do? 78% of them, and if you go to the next uh, slide, you'll see this a little bigger. 78% um, have the, um, they eat breakfast every day. And so, you know, they're really getting, um, they, they're starting the day of getting that energy, um, you know, in control so that they're making better choices throughout the day, as opposed to kind of that counter intuitive idea of, um, of saying, hey, I'm going to skip breakfast and maybe I'll be better off without it. So we'll go on to the next slide. Um, you know, the concept of treating yourself is a, 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 a key component of getting out of the diet mindset, which says, hey, I'm on a diet and I'm never going to have the glazed donut ever again, or, you know, for the next three months or whatever your, your, uh, the diet type of thinking might be that ends up, um, you know, leading to just this pent up, you know, desire to have that, that crazy, um, junk food. And then often you'll just go, go off the deep and say, I can't sustain this approach anymore. I need to have my donuts. I need to have whatever it is. And then you, you kind of throw out the entire program and feel, you know, maybe a bit like a, um, you've let yourself down, you've failed at the effort. We find if you build in this um, this treat yourself day to say, hey, you know, maybe it's Sunday. It's the day I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to have some of those things I've been doing better at, at avoiding. Um, and what we find is that can help let off some steam, let off some of that pent up desire. It also there's a funny dynamic where people will feel um, they, they realize, wow, after that treat myself day, I feel kind of polluted. I don't feel as as energetic and as strong as I normally um, have been. I, I don't crave that as much. And so maybe the next week when they get to their treat, the, um, their treat day, they might still have some of the things they've been um, avoiding, but have a bit less of them. And they start to see this feedback loop of, wow, making a better, um, feeding myself better is feels better. And it's, it, that starts to become a bit of a, uh, of a good addiction versus saying, oh, this, I don't like the, the polluted way I feel when I, when I have the treat. Uh, let's go to the next. So that is, you know, a bit on the nutrition side. And then if you shift gears into the, um, the exercise side, where you look at this concept of, um, of the, the, the physical activity, you know, and you think of some of the simple math where we're trying to get to that 500 calorie deficit per day, thinking that, you know, a, cal a, a pound of excess body weight um, equates to about 3,500 calories. And so if you had 500 fewer collective calories each day for seven days, that gets you seven times 500 is 3,500. That would equal a pound of weight loss. But if you get there only by doing the, um, the calorie burn um, or, or the, uh, the calorie restriction side, consuming 200 or consuming 500 calories less, that's a tall order for a lot of people to eat 500 fewer calories a day, every day, relative to your baseline, that might be a, a bigger lift than you can, um, than you can sustain. But guess what? You can cut that in half by saying, I'm going to, to reduce by 250 calories a day, how much I eat. And I'm going to try to move my body for 250 more calories that combined can get you to that same target, but get you there in a way that um, doesn't feel as daunting and doesn't feel as um, you won't feel as depleted as just kind of trying to starve yourself. Let's go on to the next, Rachel. And part of what um, is at play here is this um, fat versus muscle concept. And there's some interesting dimensions to it. Um, you know, here you can see um, one of our health coaches holding in her right hand um, on the left side of the screen, five pounds of, um, of simulated muscle. And on the, the right side of your screen is five pounds of simulated fat. They weigh the same. If you put them on the scale, each one is five pounds. The muscle is more dense and less, has less volume to it. And so when you, you think about that, 
just from purely the appearance sake, and that's not the, the reason to be doing any of this, but it, it, it shows, you know, if you can replace some of that excess body fat with lean muscle, it's more compact. It changes the, the physique that you have, which um, is usually very satisfying for individuals, but it's also going to, um, that lean muscle is going to be metabolically active and, and burn calories throughout the day and help you kind of as a secret weapon to, um, to manage your weight a bit more. And I, I see it in myself when I, only do the cardiovascular side of things and, and just I'm busy and I said, well, I can just do a, a quick run today, but I don't have time to do um, strength work on a strength day. I have a harder time managing my weight when I do the strength work counterintuitively combined with that, um, the cardio work, it tends to help me just kind of moderate my weight a lot better in addition to getting a stronger back, getting stronger legs. So really it's, it, it serves so many, um, so many purposes and um, a lot of people skip it. They think exercise is just cardio, but there's, there's a lot more um, if you can build through resistance training, some of the, um, the lean muscle. Let's uh, go to the next, Rachel. And so this is you know, trying to, to get those two halves and, and make sure you, you think both ways about cardio versus strength. We can advance from here. And so if you look, um, you know, this will play a little um, Next a little video up, clip. standing curls. For but standing we'll bicep you. curls, you will need a set of dumbbells. Make sure to keep your elbows in tight to your sides, your core engaged, and go slow up the movement and slow back down. Get ready. Let's go. One. Two. Three. Four. And so in that example, you know, and that's kind of working upper body and working the muscles on the front of your arm and some of your back muscles. Um, and, and you can do these with, with weights, you can do them with milk jugs, you can do them with resistance bands that we, um, we send to our members. Um, and we'll, you know, we, we show people how to do that. You can see this intensity level here between a level one and a level five. So it doesn't even matter how much weight you have. And um, it's more about what's the exertion for you from level one of just sitting on the couch and not doing anything to a level 10 being, this is all I can handle with good, safe form. We gradually will, will progress you through this, um, this sequence, which will help you build that lean muscle. And then when you alternate it on the days and do your cardio, it really is a, a powerful one, two punch. Uh, let's go to the next. Next up. Um, and, you know, and getting people into this, you know, most people begin in the foundation level. They start in the beginning. Um, and all we do as we progress people, if they go to intermediate or advanced, is we'd add more days. But the beginning is just two cardio, two strength, and, and that's usually enough. Um, and there's definitely a, a myth. If you go on to the next slide, um, Rachel, you know, there's a myth that you're going to um, just become you know, look like a bodybuilder if you do the, the strength work. And, and we often hear that, you know, this is an interesting, you know, men's health month type of concept, but we hear that a lot from our, our female participants saying, I don't want to, to be, to look like a bodybuilder. And it really is, um, is not going to happen without a lot of really, really intense focused effort to, to, um, to build those muscles to that level. That really, that'll never happen accidentally and definitely not in the, the, the level that we're, we're coaching in our program. But what we have seen is people go through these fascinating transformations when they, they work on healthy eating, they work on the active living and the active living isn't just going for a walk, which is fantastic, but that and the strength work. Um, people talk about, you know, my back pain has gone away. My back is stronger. My legs are stronger. I don't feel as, um, as sore in the back when I, when I have to sit in my desk chair throughout, throughout an eight hour day. So, um, you know, we know that, that combining those together um, really can work and, and work for, for men and women. Uh, let's go on to the, the next. And then this is just kind of some reminders. If you skip this one, um, I'm James I some questions have come in. I want to be able to answer any of those. But you know, in in our um, in our coaching, you know, we're we're giving all the options for. Do I want the gluten free? We just launched a Mediterranean um, eating pattern that's really um, got a lot of heart healthy stuff in it. Um, if you go on to the next slide, you know, we're giving out the shopping list every week. Um, showing the, the videos of how to do these things, particularly like this one, doing it, that arm exercise using a band so that you can do this at home and, and really get, get moving. And some of the movements that are in there like squats that you don't need any exercise and you can just do it just body weight movement done slowly and in control can really be challenging, number one, but you'll feel it the next day. You'll feel a little bit of, of uh, tightness in your legs, for instance, if you haven't been doing um, good proper form squats, 
but it's amazing that that tightness and that little bit of um, pain, you know, they call it delayed onset muscle soreness, but that's the sign that you're moving a muscle that normally isn't being taxed and it's going to get stronger. And the, the neat thing I always think about is that feeling of, of, um, of tenderness when you kind of tap a muscle at the day or two after you've done a workout for the first time, a, typically a strength workout, that's the, um, that's the sign that your, your muscles are starting to adapt and it's saying, ooh, I better be able to do that next time. Guess what? That's going to recruit some of those lean muscle fibers and build the strength so your body is ready the next time. And I always tell myself, hey, that's the signal that it's working. And that's part of that, um, that caloric burn is it takes body energy to to build that muscle and to do the repair work that happened from doing some of the strength training. And so try to get that in your head as a good feedback signal that, you know what, I'm supposed to feel a little tender from this the next day. And I'm not talking about like my joint hurts and I've, I've strained something. I'm talking about more just the general muscle um, feeling once you've, you've gone through and done something new. Uh, you can continue. I think we're about at the end. Yeah. And the audio guides, um, same thing in here, you know, for the, the cardio days, if you haven't used it, you know, plug in your earphones and listen to our health coach, take you on a 10 minute walk or a 20 minute run telling you when to speed up, when to slow down. Um, you know, really we want to hold your hand on, on that journey. We can. Hi, next. I'm coach Kenna here to lead you. You can yeah, click through. And then on the, um, on the activity side, if you're one of the tracker types, if you, you wear a Fitbit or an Apple watch or a Garmin, um, and you haven't um, linked it up yet, I encourage you to do that. It's, it's neat to see, um, you know, we'll give you all the patterns of what's happening and bring it all under that same, um, that same umbrella of, of all the other components in the uh, Incentive Health uh, experience. And I think that might be the last one. Oh, I think I had meditations in here just as a, as part of that, um, that overall mindset, you know, the focusing on what you eat, focusing on your exercise, those are all key, but we've got some great meditations that you can listen to some of them on healthy eating and on, um, paying attention to, um, one of the meditations says you put a, a grape or a raisin in your mouth and leave it in there for 30 seconds while you're, you're really being aware of the texture and the flavor. And that can go a long way in terms of shifting, you know, from I'm going to eat my meal in front of the TV and be distracted and not even know what I'm doing versus, no, this is the event is having this meal. Let me taste it. Let me slow down, give your, your stomach and your brain a, a chance to catch up to each other and, and feel, um, feel like you're full. You know, there's a neat um, quote in Japan that they say, hara hachi bu. And that means, and they do it as a toast before a meal. And that means eat until you're 80% full. And they, it's kind of funny the first time I encountered it, but they say that because they're trying to remind themselves, hey, I'm about to tuck into this big plate of whatever. And the temptation is to get all the way through it because it smells so good and I'm really hungry, but stop when you think you're, you could eat more and give yourself 20 minutes, you'll probably feel fine and, and even better than that <laughs> bloated feeling. So I think that's probably the last one, uh, Rachel, if you, if you click ahead. Yeah, that was just gonna play a sample. So those are, that, that's what I wanted to, to bring up today. And you know, these are just some examples of people that have um, kind of gone through this and, and taking some of these healthy eating, active living principles to heart and uh, men or women. And um, just wanted to, to share some of those things. I don't know if there are any uh, questions, Rachel. It doesn't look like we have any in the chat, but for those of you on the line, um, feel free to put those in the chat, take yourself off mute, whatever's easiest if you have any questions for Todd. It doesn't look like we're getting any in. Um, Todd, thank you so, so much for joining us today. I know I learned a few things. I'm hoping that um, those who are either on the call live or watching this at home um, got the same benefit. As always, we will be back next um, Wednesday with a topic about sleep. We're going to talk about why sleep is important and why you should uh, um, prioritize it. Teresa does say no questions. Thank you, Todd and Rachel. Of course, Teresa, thanks for joining us. Um, and with that, I'm gonna stop our, share, our uh, recording.